trained activists, worked with college administrations to establish study abroad centers all over the country in Israel. And these examples reflect APAC's overarching goal of its committed activists, get to the people who matter. I have an impressive statistic to share with you. It turns out that 60% of members of Congress, so that's 435 in the House and 100 in, Senate, in the Senate, 60% of them come from 60 select colleges and universities. So that means that APAC needs to be on these colleges and universities, reaching out to the types of people who have historically run for Congress. Presidents of fraternities and sororities, presidents of student unions and LGBT clubs and black student unions, college Republicans and college Democrats. We have our work cut out for us on those 60 campuses. But that statistic means that 40% of members of Congress come from the other 4,500 other colleges and universities across the campus. That's not a small number. We truly have our work cut out for us and not enough students to accomplish the job. So the key to being a proactive, effective pro-Israel activist is to get to those who will one day influence communities. As a student at NYU, I regularly asked student leaders to get together for a cup of coffee. They were often confused. Why is a stranger emailing me and why does she want to take me to Starbucks? But once we started talking, I realized how little they actually knew about Israel. They didn't have a source or, or go-to website to explain in a very unbiased way what was going on. I especially found during, uh, for example, Operation Cast Lead, which happened my sophomore year at NYU, that they needed a source to turn to to ask these questions that the headlines just weren't explaining enough. And I serve as that resource. These people will one day go on to be members of Congress, be leaders in some sense in their business, in their home, in their community, and it's extremely important that we don't forget about them. So the first step for you students, once you get to campus, find out what pro-Israel clubs exist on campus. Most colleges with a sizable Jewish population will have some sort of pro-Israel club where you can watch Israeli movies and eat falafel and sing Israeli songs like Daniel mentioned. But sophisticated students are beginning to start these pro-Israel political clubs on campus. See if these clubs exist on, their, on your campus. And if they don't, start one. Be in touch with your local APAC office, whether it's us here in Manhattan, in the regional office here, or any other part of the country and see how you can start getting the tools you need to start clubs like this. There's a number of different resources involved, uh, available for college students, a few of which I will quickly tell you about. The first one is a four-day conference, all expenses paid in Washington, D.C. for college students. They bring together about 400 students from all over the country for intense days of activism and training and lobbying and skills workshops, such as public speaking and solicitations and resume building. Um, another option, and this is reserved for our top Israel activists, is something called the Advanced Advocacy Mission. And this is a highly subsidized 10-day trip to Israel with 40 other students. And it's very similar to the types of missions that APAC and our sister foundation often take members of Congress on. You really gain access to sites and, and, um, and tourist attractions that aren't available on your normal shul mission or family trip. You can also apply to be an intern in any one of APAC's 15 satellite offices or DC headquarters. I personally interned in the New York office during my senior year of college, and I never left. So obviously it was a great experience, um, and I'm still here today. One more thing that you can do is convince your parents to take you to policy conference, which you just saw up there. You know, every single year we sit down with our families and we recount the story of the exodus. But how often do parents speak to their children about the modern day exodus, the ship which carried Holocaust survivors to modern day, to, to mandatory British Palestine, only to be turned away? How often do we have this critical conversation of what Zionism is and how the modern state of Israel was created? Policy Conference is your opportunity for this Zionist Seder. Come to Washington, DC. It's been called the three most important days affecting the US-Israel relationship. Really nothing compares to the emotion, the sense of power and camaraderie that you get when you stand up side, shoulder to shoulder with 14,000 other pro-Israel activists, not all Jewish by the way, and sing Hatikva. It's such a magical moment and I really hope that all of you will come together and experience this for yourself. 
The conference actually culminates in an um, opportunity for all conference attendees to lobby their members of Congress. And as you heard in the video, last year for the first time ever, we had appointments in every single member of Congress office. It's a huge accomplishment. So in, consider coming. Uh, you won't regret it. We have sign-up sheets in the back on the tables where you'll have refreshments. And really do something as a family to, to celebrate Zionism and the miracle that is the State of Israel. Lastly, I just want to share one quick story with you. In 1943, during the darkest days of the Holocaust, 400 New York-based rabbis decided to board a train and head to Washington. They wanted to make a difference. They were never really involved in politics before. It just wasn't for them. But they wanted to call on Congress and the administration to take tangible action to stop the extermination of European Jewry. So for the first time in their life, they went to Penn Station and they traveled down to Washington. And they left Union Station and they marched toward Capitol Hill. For the first time, they were so excited. They were going to implore their government to take action on the issue that was most important to them and their communities. Does anyone have a guess as to what this type of action is called? Any guesses out there? Most people say lobbying, but it's actually not lobbying. What these rabbis did is called begging. If you've never been involved in politics before, if you've never taken advantage of your rights as an American citizen to play an active part in the political process, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, you want to ask your members of Congress for something, it's not called lobbying. It's called begging. So at the height of the Holocaust, 400 rabbis boarded trains and went down to Washington so that they could beg their government to act. And frankly, their government said no. The congressional leaders that they met with didn't feel the need to take any action. They marched down to Pennsylvania Avenue to meet with the president, and President Roosevelt slipped out the back door in order to avoid a meeting with these rabbis. He had no compelling reason to meet with them. AIPAC was built on the notion that never again can this happen. We were founded over 60 years ago on a simple premise. It was time for American Jews to stop begging and start lobbying. In every single congressional district in all 50 states, APAC trained activists work with policymakers to ensure that America will always stand with Israel. And all around the country, in meetings just like this, APAC trained activists and students are building the sorts of relationships that enable them to successfully lobby their members of Congress and tangibly affect American foreign policy. None of this is by chance. Our ability to influence policy and affect politics is a direct result to our commitment to believe in those words, never again. Never again will we, will we be powerless, and never again will we not have a voice. We will always have a, vo a voice and an influence to move the policy needle in Washington, and that is because of APAC. But we need you. Our top lay leaders won't be around forever, and our best friends on Capitol Hill could lose an election. Through APAC, Americans who cherish Israel can shape history and determine our future so that never again will we be left powerless. So please consider coming to Policy Conference. Get involved in your communities, in your school, on your college campuses, and do your part to ensure that Israel internally exists. Thank you so much for coming out today, and I look forward to hopefully speaking with many of you after the program. We just have a music video. Um, it's called Maximum Restraint and it's by Peter Himmelman, who is Bob Dylan's son in law. Pilot, he keeps his name secret, is in the reserve forces. His job is simple kill the rocket men inside Gaza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tear a man to shreds. Well, just imagine what they can do to babies sleeping in their beds. There's close to 3,000 coming in on our cities and our towns. Ha! <laughs> 
photo off the tape Went straight up to CNN Where the companions will be aggressive And let it all begin again When someone comes to kill you In the middle of the night Don't try to make yourself Don't lose your Just getting a picture of Canada sure does too. It's time to take the gloves off. Time to see this through. But the White House wants a ceasefire. They just want to hand 